Well, everybody, I can barely open my door this morning, so it looks like I'm not getting anywhere fast as the front of my street is all backed up. We got a pretty good snow here for Cleveland today. Fun stuff. It's awesome. It's really not too bad outside. I tell you what, the temperature is not bad. It's like 28 or 29, but uh, I really can't get down my street here with the big van. So it looks as though I'll be staying home today. Kids are playing in the snow too. Good times. What's up everybody, Brian Mann here, hands-on auto training. This is the end of day, January 17th, 2022. Guys, it is going on, it's uh, it's 10 to three and this plow still has not been down my street to uh, help me get out of my driveway, so I can't make it out today. That's unfortunate, but let's go over a few things here. Uh, let's do Pop Quiz Monday in just a little bit. We're gonna work on that. And uh, guys, the answers will be given in today's video, so we well, don't have to uh, square up with that tomorrow. But I want to let you guys know we got four more U scopes I'm giving away uh, in the next two months. So, guys, if you're not signed up for the core premium memberships, be sure to get uh, signed up there. Also, I wanted to tell you guys on the membership site, I did uh, go ahead and get the Toyota programming video up there. So. The complete programming video for that Toyota Tundra is up on the membership website. So under the Toyota lesson, you can have access to that. You'll see all this, uh, you know, the complete step-by-step -step programming there. So just want to make sure you guys were aware about that. Uh, what else uh, housekeeping stuff we got going on? Premium members, we have our meeting this Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I got a little tiny uh, chip here. We're going to be going over... Uh, using uh, EEPROM reader and just going over some basic hexadecimal stuff, some very basic things that I haven't uh, found that other uh, classes have taught me. We're going to start with the very basics and build upon that. So if you're a premium member, be sure to be there this Thursday. I wanted to play uh, Pop Quiz Monday with you all since I don't have any uh, real in the field uh, experiences to share with you. So we're going to go over a couple things here. And for some reason, my stream deck's not working. Come on now. There we go. So this is that 2015 GMC Yukon Denali that I was looking at the other day. Uh, we had a multiple two of uh, codes, a no-start situation. The frame was replaced on this vehicle, and this is the one that they're supposed to order up the pigtails and call me when the pigtails came in. I didn't get a call today. I was expecting a call today, but even if I did get the call, I can't make it out there. But I want to look at the diagram of this fuel pump and fuel pump control module together with you and to take a look at what you think or the right answers would be to some different uh, questions. So let's go ahead and look up the fuel pump control module and fuel pump on this vehicle. So we're going to click on diagrams, and guys, we are using all data service repair information here. So I'm going to go to electrical OEE. And I'm um, scrolling down to powertrain management. We're going to click on that. And we're going to go to engine control schematics. And right here you can see we got uh, fuel controls, which is going to be our fuel injectors. And we got our, uh, and fuel pressure probably to control for the high pressure fuel pump. And we got our fuel pump control module, fuel pump control. This is the low pressure side of this system. So taking a look here, I'm going to go ahead and blow this up. So we all can see, and uh, let me see here, I'm going to get myself out of your way. Anytime I look at a diagram, I like to, you know, understand how it's supposed to work. And the easiest way for me to do that is to take a look at the load. And in this example, the load is our fuel pump, okay? The fuel pump's going to be doing the work here, so that is our load. So we can follow this, uh, let's just take a look at pin 2 here. We can follow that down. That is showing the ground symbol here. Let me blow this up just a little bit for you guys. So pin two coming from the fuel pump uh, and level sensor assembly uh, is showing a ground here. That's this circuit right here. And then we've got uh, pin number one is going to this pin eight of the fuel pump control module. And that is showing uh, power. It's a switched power. Now they aren't giving us a lot of detail here about how that works. But this gives us a lot of information right off the bat. Now the next easiest thing to find in this circuit is the ground. Pin 9 is the ground and that goes to G121. And uh, the other easiest things to tell here are our powers. Okay, We can tell our powers coming in. Uh, we have one battery positive. This means it's hot all the time. Fuse F25UA is a 30 amper and that's underneath the underhood fuse block and that goes down depending on our RPO options it either goes this way or this way but the end result of what's going on here doesn't matter because you can see it's connected right here so it doesn't matter which one is which 
we're going to have the same result at pin one of our fuel pump control module when this is working properly. Now pin six is a power too. This is a power when the ignition main relay is commanded on. And you can see that comes straight down there. Pretty easy stuff. What else do we have going on here? Well, we have this blunt cut shield. Um, that's just basically, I think that's a, a, a end section of the wire. I don't have a for sure answer on this part of it. I gotta look into this more. But I can tell you this is grounded, and what I believe this is doing is shielding. And when you see this symbol like this, you know it's shielded. That's what this uh, circuit is here. We're shielding this circuit against interference. Now, the next circuit over here is our fuel pump uh, driver enable circuit. I believe, uh, and this is connector 1, pin 44, basically when the engine control module wants the fuel pump to turn on, it goes ahead and turns this signal on. Um, and that's going down to the fuel pump control module. Now we have a bunch of other wires here. Now these, this symbol here, just so you know, the back and forth arrows going up and down here on each one of these, these are all data lines in and out, in and out. And you can always take a look at the uh, uh, circuit numbers to determine what they're on. But when you have a diagram like this, we don't have a lot going on here to, to, uh, to really understand what's happening. The rest of the circuit's pretty easy to understand, in my opinion. Taking a look at our battery positive or ignition and our ground, that's simple. We got our output over here, that's simple. Um, and I believe this is pretty simple too. This is just uh, uh, pulled high. I believe it goes up to 12 volts when this is turned on. I'm not 100% sure about that, but that's something to look into. Uh, but the rest of this, we got to go to the data communication schematic. So let's go ahead over there and take a look at our data communication. Oh, I went back too far, guys. Hit the wrong button. Electrical OE, and we're going to go to, it's going to be information bus, and that's going to be our data communication schematics. And as you see here, there are a lot of things going on. Just so you know, we've got our low speed LAN, GM LAN, and that's not what we we're on. We we're on our high speed over there. But we can take a look at this just so you see. You got your DLC, pins 1, 4, 5, and 16. That's a nice picture. But, and then this one over here shows all the low speed LAN. We're not really concerned about that. We want to see the high speed communication network. There we go. So we got our transfer case control module, uh, junction block in your instrument panel, active safety control module, uh, transmission control module or the transmission control solenoid valve, depending on which transmission you have, engine control module, distance sensing module, lots of good stuff here, right? Not quite what I'm looking for though. Um, you also have your most communication bus. And this is your media oriented system transfer. Uh, that is a fast network made for information uh, like uh, you know entertainment stuff. But we also have a chassis, chassis expansion bus. There's a lot of stuff, powertrain expansion bus, object detection. Uh, but I think, uh, where was it? I think it was underneath high speed network two. Is this where it was, the fuel pump control module? No, suspension, power steering, telematics, human interface, front view control module. Where is our where is our fuel pump control module? Let's take a look here. Let's try our powertrain expansion bus. Ah, there we go. Oh, look at this. It's almost like the uh, engine control module and the uh, fuel pump control module are on their own little network here. How about that? That's pretty cool. Very interesting. So we got a terminating resistor up here and a terminating resistor down there. Well, I still don't see that one circuit I didn't know about. These are those up and down arrows showing us that we have uh, data communication going on. Let's go back this thing up. And I think it's gonna be under communications enable or accessory wake up. Okay, this is not what I wanted. So we have our accessory wake up circuit here. Okay, here we go. Here's our chassis control module and here's our fuel pump driver control module, okay? This pin seven is on this accessory wake up and depending on the uh, uh, RPO codes that you have, it's gonna go straight through or all the way over to here, back up to here. Sometimes I find it easier to work these diagrams backwards if you don't know your RPO codes because some vehicles may or may not have a fuel driver control module or whatever. So just uh, work it backwards sometimes and you can get a better result quicker. And you can see here the body control module can turn this circuit on. It looks like it's applying power uh, to this circuit to wake it up. 
So now that we have a basic understanding of our uh, system, let's go back and ask a few questions here. We're going to go ahead and set up a hypothetical situation saying the fuel pump control module is not communicating with the engine control module. In this instance, the engine control module, I guess, would be setting a code saying no communication with a fuel pump driver control module. And I'm going to give you four possible answers. We're looking for the incorrect uh, reading. We want to see a reading that is like, hey, here's the problem. Okay, so our meter is going to be at different points in this circuit. Is it answer A? We're back probing into the data line. We're reading two and a half volts here. I don't know about this. Two and a half volts is A, answer A. Write down what you guys think the answer is for the uh, wrong reading. We have B, we're reading three tenths of a volt at our ground, back probing. This is all with the key on, engine off, maybe cranking even. Or we can have uh, an answer of C, we're reading 12.5 volts back probe into this battery positive pin. Or D, we're measuring one tenth of a volt at the ignition positive. This is pin six of the fuel pump control module is D. Which one of these is the incorrect reading? So you had A of two and a half volts on a data line. Well, I'll tell you right now, uh, if I read two and a half volts on a CAN bus line, I'd be like, hey, that's pretty close to being good. I'm not so worried about that with a multimeter. You can't really see what's going on for sure with a, uh, unless you have a scope, but that's not bad. If we read three tenths of a volt on a ground, I'm not so worried about that either. That's low voltage on a ground. We're reading in reference between our uh, ground on our common and this point of our fuel pump control module. That's not a bad reading. Next, we have C, which is 12.5 volts being read back probed into our fuel pump control module on its battery positive circuit. That's good. And then we have D. If we read uh, one tenth of one volt at a ignition uh, voltage line going into a module, that's bad. There's somewhere a voltage drop in this circuit. D is the correct answer, or should I say the wrong reading for this example. Let's try one more. For our next example, we're just going to say we don't have any fuel pump operation. So answer A is we're reading between ground and this line of the fuel pump control module, or fuel pump itself. This is where the uh, fuel pump driver turns it on. We're reading 12.2 volts at this point. Is A, is that bad? B, between this point and this point of this circuit, we're reading 0.2 volts. C, between this point of our engine control module and this point of our fuel pump driver control module, we're reading 12.4 volts. Or D, between this point of our underhood fuse block and this point of our fuel pump driver control module, we're reading one tenth of one volt. Go ahead and think about that and let me know what you guys think here. Uh, or should I say write it down? We're going to go ahead and go over it real So in this answer for A, um, I think this is a good reading, okay? 12.2 volts uh, read through this, uh, uh, on this circuit to the fuel pump, okay? We're back probed at our fuel pump with everything on. We're reading 12.2 volts. I don't think that's a bad reading. Sorry, I got my V out of the way there. That's kind of messed up. For B, we had two tenths of a volt. Now, we're on the same piece of wire here, guys, right? The same circuit. If we're ever using our multimeter on the same circuit, we should have a very, very low voltage. And, you know, a fuel pump is a, maybe a higher amperage load, maybe, you know, 5 to 8 amps, 10 amps. Maybe I don't know what this fuel pump's dry, uh, pulling. But two-tenths of a volt drop between this point and this point is not alarming to me. I'm not worried about that. Next, we had 12.4 volts between this point and this point. This is important to talk about, guys. If we're on the same piece of wire, okay, our meter is measuring the difference in potential between its leads of 12.4 volts on the same circuit, Guys, we have a problem. There's either an open circuit or a very high resistance in this circuit. This is the, uh, the wrong reading. This is the right answer, but the wrong reading, if you know what I mean, um, for, for our question. I hope that you guys understand that and get it. If you don't understand this, make sure you check out the basic electricity course on hands-on auto training. And let's talk about uh, the next answer, answer uh, D, uh, one-tenth of a volt drop between this point of this circuit and this point of the circuit. I'm okay with a tenth of a volt drop on a on a uh, control power circuit or something like that. Really not a big deal. We gotta make sure we have near battery potential available uh, to a module and, and dropping a tenth of a volt on a wire, not a big deal. 
So like I said, if you guys don't have a good grasp of the basic electricity, be sure to check out hands-on auto training courses. I'll put a link in the description. You sign up for the core premium membership, you'll be entered in to win a couple more U-scopes in the next uh, well, two months, we're going to give away four more scopes, and you will learn something about basic electricity. I appreciate everybody taking the time to watch. I hope you're not snowed in like I am. Take it easy. Bye-bye.